to introduce the CEO. The CEO, you know. Don't ramp, you know. Don't mess about. This is the award-winning show, yeah? Before we introduce the CEO, send on one more truth. Send them the story about me before we talk to the CEO. Big Master J. How you say? Kill. And dope your sound easy, you know. Easy thing that in a scene, Sparks, aka Eric, it said that in a scene. When it comes to reggae music, Mix Master J, you have the thing like in a scene, simple thing. That oh gosh, man. Oh gosh, man. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Hold on. Balance the machine. Welcome aboard, sir. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. What's up, Jay, man? What's going on? I, I just hear, man, putting in the work, brother. How are you, sir? How are you? I see that, man. I'm listening to those dubs. Yo, yo you have more dub than me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Listen. It's very important. Hold on one second. Hello? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, man, I can hear you. All right, good. I got rid of the buzzing. All right. It's very important for people to understand who you are. You're so synonymous with sound system and sound system culture, right? That you've set a trend that maybe no one can ever, ever follow. Would you agree? I'm just, I'm just doing, doing, doing. They, they say that. Um, when you can make a living or make a job out of something that you love is a great thing, you know? So we grew up as sound man, select the box man. Nothing yeah. big, Sorry. but nothing small. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, I said we grew up as, as you know, box man and wire man and select and all of these things. So... When wow. you can make a living something that you love, you know, it, it, it's a really wonderful thing. So I get up every day and, and I do something that I have a huge interest in. And it, 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 for the most part, it doesn't seem like work, you know? Well, I'll tell you what. It, it might not seem like work, but it's something that you enjoy. Because every time I see you, you always have a smile on your face. Yeah, man, I, I I can't lie. I really, I really, I really enjoy what I do. I mean, at times it it can get frustrating. Um, at times it can get challenging, but at the most part, I couldn't see myself doing nothing else. You know what I mean? Wow, wow, you couldn't see yourself. But hold on, you can't say that really because you're doing your show. You've developed like you've got Irish and chin, like the whole the whole entity yeah, of that you do radio. But, but, my 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 platform now, which is Sound Chat Radio, is just an extension of Sound System Culture. Okay. Um, I feel I feel like in anything that you do, uh, you gotta use your celebrity to open other doors. So for me, and the advice that I try to give people that would listen is that we're not supposed to get stuck as sound men. So men is supposed to be the first platform in our careers. So we play at these parties, we lift these speaker box, we ball up with short on a microphone in order to get a celebrity status. And once you get that celebrity status, when you get that recognition, you use that recognition to open other doors to elevate what you're doing, you know, elevate your brand, open new opportunities for yourself. So um, for me, it started as a selector, you know, maybe... 25, 30 years ago or so, right? That's how I got into the industry. And now I own my own media platform, you know, but it's all still an extension of where I'm coming from. And um, the platform here at SoundChat is full of sound man. Most of my broadcasters are sound people who didn't believe that they would ever be on radio, you know what I mean? Wow. But now they're on radio and they're presenting and you know, it's a different level of popularity for them and it's just a different, you know what I mean? That's just what it is, you know? Most people don't understand that um, my real reason for building the platform was to talk about sound system culture. That's why the platform is called SoundChat, you know what I mean? Um, I, I spent about two years doing so and then I saw doors, other opportunities um, presenting themselves. 
where I had to make that decision and whether I'm going to restrict it to just have a voice among sound system culture or if I'm going to use the platform to have a voice amongst everybody that loves dance hall and reggae music, right? So right. I took that opportunity and this is where we are now. So again, you know, I, I can't see myself stepping too far away from the culture of what we do, you know? Wow. I mean, I like to be educated and as a, as a radio personality myself, it's like, I never knew that you, I, I heard rumor, but to actually have it confirmed by yourself that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Wire, play a song, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah, for man, me, yeah, that's man, amazing that's, to know. That's, that's how, you know, that's how we got in, you know, most of the, the Jamaicans, born in Jamaica, you know, talk about the Jaros and the this and the that and the Silverhawks and those experiences. You know, I was born in the States, grew up in the States. Okay. And um, my, my influence was, you know, the, the, the Addies and the Baby Faces and those type of sound systems, you know. Okay. So other than, other than hearing, you know, the big, the big giants on cassettes, you know, in the early days when I was younger, I never really got to go to certain dances and sound clashes to experience them in Jamaica. We, okay. were experiencing them. we were experiencing them here in New York, you know, um, when they came up to Clash Addies for the most part, you know, or one of the other popular sound systems in Brooklyn. So um, during those times, you know, I come from an a, a area in New York called Queens. You know, I'm a Queens yeah. kid. And during that time, Queens was kind of like the, uh, the bougie part of the culture. You know what I mean? Okay. The part of okay. the culture. Yeah, the rough part of the culture, they are Brooklyn and they are Browns. You know, Queens people are more... Um, back in those days, when you moved to Queens, it was kind of like you, you're moving into... Your status are going to look... You, you know, you're getting up. You're getting up uh, in status, right? All so right. You're, moving out the, you're moving out of the hood, you know? Um, so we had... You know, we started a local sound system in, in our area that was doing extremely, extremely well. Um, the reason why most people didn't hear about that are no... So people are just finding out how to connect those dots is because we weren't in Brooklyn and we weren't in Bronx. And that's where, you know, when you think of Brook when you think of New York, you think of Brooklyn or Bronx, you know? Downbeat is running the Bronx and um, you know, Addis and Africa and then Monday are run Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Queens was kind of just like a neutral territory, not really known for sound system culture. But okay. you know, I started that way. I, I did the clashes. Um Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, stick up in. What do you say? You're, you're there for the back of field? Yeah, man, we, we, we did the clashes. Um, you know, growing up, you know, trying to emulate what we saw in Biltmore Ballroom okay. and um, discovering discovering the whole dub play thing. Um, where my family is from in, you know, in Kingston, um, we, sh we, we, you know, in the tenement yard that we lived in, um, right next door, there was a, a, a famous selector from Stone Love named Disco Birch during those who know the early Stone Love crew. So okay. uh, Disco Birch was really, really into, you know, he was, he was the disco guy on Stone Love, but them time that disco, a big part of dance hall in Jamaica, you know? Of course, of course. Um, it still is. Yeah, so, so, so I was able to be mentored at that early age by Birchell and um, got into the music, found out about, you know, Arrow's studio and jamming studio and all of these things and actually started to cut, you know, this barrage of dub plates. Um, so once you have these dubs, the only thing left to do is start the sound clashing, you know? Right. So uh, we started clashing locally and then we started clashing um, the big sounds because that's what Addy is and everybody else was doing. So we knew that that is what we had to do as well. Back in those days, uh, sound clash was different. It wasn't like every dance was in verses, you know? It was a right. juggling that turned into a war in most cases, you know? Right. Um, so I did a couple couple years of that. Um, bodyguard, uh, inner city clashes, um, uh, black cat clashes. In fact, um, by, you know, it's documented that I actually got the first kill off a of black cat, you know, when they came oh, here to the, to the state. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. So, so what, what is the name of the sound? The name of the sound was King Agony. It was a sound system with me oh. and my childhood version there. You know what I mean? So, you know, we were kids at the time, teenagers, just doing our own thing and trying to get in. Um, 
we elevated to the top of the, the, the Queen circuit as far as uh, Sound Clash would go, you know? Um, right. There was another song in the community called Pretty Posse, um, which was more famous for juggling. So they would have been like a stone love of the community. Okay. And then we would have been more like a Kilimanjaro, right? Right. So, um, you know, and, and it's crazy because... Later on, that sound system gives birth to Ninja Crown, who now plays Mighty Crown. Um, Killer Boo, who plays Addies, also comes from that sound system as well. Okay. All right, so we were definitely a strong sound system at the time. In about 1992, 1993, when Black Cat was, um, you know, destroying everything in Jamaica, and they, were, they came here for their first visit um, to clash Addies, uh, the promoter or a promoter from their community back home in Jamaica, was able to get a date with them in Queens. Clearly, they okay. took the date because, you know, the Queens is just that residential. Yeah, you know, niceness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they took the date, and, um, yeah, we, 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 we had that clash, and we, we actually got that first stripe off of him, you know, off of Black Wow. Cat Panta. A, a um, Panta too. Yeah, it was Panta playing the sound system um, at that time, and, um, yeah, he, he lost. He would never admit that, but... Um, <laughs> The proof is there. And if you listen back to Addis, the week later, you would hear Babyface saying, um, yo, you there, run off your mouth, and I look a sound from Queens, hurt up your head last week, you know? Oh, so, wow. yeah. It was, you know, so we did it. We did it. And I think that I have this saying that says, um, you can't tell me how to play the game unless you played it. Right? Sure. There's no way you can coach the team if you don't if you never played the sport. All coaches play the sport. It's not only a theory, it has to be practical as well. So I think that a lot of my success comes from the fact that I played the sport. I know what it is, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I I didn't become a, a Mataran or a troop or a Lynx or anything like that, but I, the basic foundation, I, I understand it, well, I know it. Yeah, I, I know the dub play cuttings. You know, I understand what it is to be a sound man. So everything else becomes natural. Being uh, a manager for Mighty Crown became very natural because, of course, I'm a sound man. You know, being a sound clash promoter came natural because I'm a sound man. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, what we're doing now with Sound Chat Radio comes natural because I'm a sound man. You know, so everything is kind of connected. I've been blessed that every step of the way, my path has always been, been connected to sound system culture. So when you look at the sound system culture now, yeah, from that time till now, every, a lot of things have changed. Dog plate price gone up. I don't know whether you experienced the splicing issue in those days. Do you know what I mean? There's so many different things and, and the, the business has evolved. How do you keep moving forward in a in an ever changing industry? Um, I live I live my life, and um, I try to to encourage the people around me to follow you know different slogans. You know, another one of my slogans is evolve or dissolve. You know what I mean? And, and I, I live by that. You know, I'm always changing. Um, for 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 25 years, I've I've all you know. I'm one of the few entertainment companies that has been blessed with consistency. Right. There's never, there's no time at all that there's never been an Irish and chin. You know what I mean? So if, you know, I take a break maybe from sound clash and I'm doing management, I may take a break from management and I'm doing theater. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm back to, to, to sound clash and now I'm doing, um, media, you know what I mean? We've always been really, really, really active, right? And um, it's part of evolving, you know, understanding that things are not going to stay the same. And because they're not going to stay the same, they're not always going to have the same effect, right? And uh, what you could do 10 years ago to attract an audience is not necessarily the same thing you can do now to attract that same audience, you know? We also got to understand that... Um, as we get older, our fan base also gets older. So as our interests change as entertainers and, um, and, and event providers, our fan base 
also changes in what they want to see and what they're willing to enjoy, right? So you can't get stuck because your fan base will outgrow you. You know what I mean? Um, once upon a time, we none of us was worried about playing bills. You know, we were. Every look of change where we get, we're going to double it through the Ganga Vice artists because guess what? We had no responsibilities. We had no kids. We had no light bill. We had no mortgage, you know? Um, things change. Life happens, and now um, you got to allocate and distribute that money differently. And sometimes it makes the dub play culture harder to keep up with, you know? Just giving you an example. Right. Um, so we have to evolve. We have to evolve, evolve in our actions. We have to evolve in our thinking in order to stay current and in order to stay effective. You know what I mean? Um, those who master that craft, will always have an impact in the culture. Those who get stuck, eventually you will start to see their stagnancy and they will not progress. And once you fail to progress, you're going to lose your space in the culture because the culture moves like this. You know what I mean? You got to keep up. Um, so to answer your question, I just feel like every day you have to get up and look, look what's going on around you and be able to figure out how you fit in, in today's picture. And then tomorrow you got to do the same thing all over again. And you got to do the same thing over again. And I'm not saying that means to compromise yourself. I'm not saying that means to do something that's against what you believe in. But it's about understanding what's happening around you and finding a corner that suits you. You know what I mean? And working out of that corner, you know? Um, the industry has changed so much. A lot of it is bad, not good. Um, but I think the, the biggest damage to the industry is the people in the industry. It's not really the industry. I, I, okay. I think a lot of sound men are... I would like to word, use the word stupid, but I, I, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I think that... I think selfish may be a better word. Right? A lot of In sound... What sound way? You know, selfish has a lot of de definitions. One who only thinks about oneself is selfish. Right? Um, I think that some men don't want to change a lot of the traditional aspects of the sound arena, whether it's just the sound system arena, because it's self-beneficial to them. For instance, right? We are now in an era where we're spending a lot of money on dub play culture, right? But that spend is not advancing the culture at all, right? Yeah. Now, I would say collectively, sound men across the world, I don't know how much sounds are across the world, but I would say if I had to guess, we're spending over a million dollars a year on dub plate material, right? Collectively, right? Over a million dollars is, is flowing through dub plate studios all over the world, right? So if a million dollars is flowing through dub plate studios all over the world, and all of these sounds are equipped with dubs, if dub plates were the answer to tomorrow's sound system culture, then we would be ahead of the game. We shouldn't have any problems because right. we're spending the money. The fact of the matter is that the dub plates are not the answer to a better sound clash arena tomorrow or a better sound system arena. Let me take out sound clash because I don't want to make this about sound clash, right? If dub plates were the answer, and we're spending a million dollars in the sound system, in our sound system culture, then we should see no decay. We should see no stagnancy. We should see nothing but success and vibrancy and excitement, right? And if we're not seeing that, then common sense is supposed to say that dub plates can't save the culture, right? Now, the selfishness comes in because the brethren who are collecting the dub plates, whatever it takes to advance without the dub plates, 
they're not going to be willing to do because that selfish part of them makes them feel like, yo, me already cut my dub them. What the money I talk about? I don't play it around the thing. So we are making decisions collectively, not for the benefit of the culture, but for the benefit of ourselves. Because if you think about this, right? Let's say tomorrow we wake up. And in a perfect world, we find the solution for sound clash and sound system, sound system excitement, right? And that solution, Jay, becomes, you know, not so reliant on dub plate culture, right? Right. Then a lot of these sound systems who invested their life into dub plate culture will come null and void. Because now, you know, the tenor saws and the nitty gritties and the garnet silk and the Dennis Browns that they so much depend on to beat them chests and set them a big song, it's null and void. It's a, it's a level playing field. And now the man with the dead artist still has to go and reprove himself to the arena again. Right? In order for the arena to move forward, they're not going to want to do that. So this is where the selfishness come in. So we have, a, we have a bunch of sound systems who are putting themselves and the needs of themselves before what it takes to keep the arena exciting, vibrant, and attracting young youth, if you get where I'm coming from. Yeah. Because the youth, the youth don't care about the dubs. No. Let's understand that, right? Um, the dance hall people who are now inheriting the space, the ones that you and I need to attract, right? They don't care about garnet silk dubs or tennis saw dubs or nitty gritty dubs, right? So do we continue to say that this is the standard that makes you a big sound, class, sound system? Therefore, keeping those youngsters out of the culture because if there's nothing in the culture that they are interested in, they're not coming in. No. You, right? And if we keep the culture the way the culture is, then will we just not be appealing to our people, our age group, our generation? But then now we have to look at the fact that our generation is getting older. Some of them are getting sick. Some of them now have mortgage to pay. Some of them have pitney for send gas school. Some of them have grandkids. So sound clash and dance hall is not on their first, it's not their first priority anymore. That's right. Right? Remember, when you and I got into the culture, we inherited it from the people before us. We were on the line trying to get into the culture. The culture has lasted this long because you and I's generation came in and took it out. And we took it from Saxon and Coxon and, you know, all of those other brethren, <clears throat> you know, um, downbeats and whoever came before us, Geminis, and we took it from them. We learned from what they were doing. We took it from them and we kept it going. My question becomes, who's learning it from us? Who's on the line to keep it going? There's no one there. And it's because it's not attractive to them. Everyone's socialization has changed. Our kids are now first and second generation West Indian, right? So you and I had an immediate impact in our Jamaican culture because even if you did born a foreign, you know, your, your, your mother, a Jamaican, your father, a Jamaican, your grandfather, a Jamaican, your grandmother is Jamaican, and you grew up in a Jamaican household because we would be first generation, right? English, our first generation Americans, our first generation Canadians. But what about us now who has came here and has kids in the UK? In, Jamaica, in England, in America, who are further withdrawn from the culture, who also have different things that they're interested in, in now, right? So a lot of our kids are listening to hip hop. They might listen to English music. They might listen to Canadian music. 
moving further away from our traditional dance hall music and our Alton Ellis and our, you know, um, um, Delroy Wilson and all of these peak persons, right? So how do you get them to take up our culture if they're so removed from the culture and in the space that we're competing in, nothing that is identifiable to them is being played in the space. How does that work? Like, we got to use common sense. We, we got to start thinking. We can't just think like, yo, me have, me, me have tennis star. Me have pane. Me have dirt, man. So, me no business if I next man have dirt, man. I feel them problem that. How long is that going to last for the culture? If you get where I'm, where I'm coming from. You know, there, there's, so many, there's so many different aspects, Jay, to look at to show you that we're making a lot of mistakes. And a lot of those mistakes is based on selfishness. We're not thinking about the arena. We're thinking about ourselves. Because, again, if we go through these necessary changes to get the kids to start loving dancehall, sound system culture, and sound clash, a lot of the mandem is going to lose their space. Think about it. If the sound clash culture progresses and we now say, why? We're not really God dance out the dub plate, so to speak. If a man drop a bad dub, we're going to get a bad forward because a bad dub. But if a man play a wicked 45, well, give him the same power. What that's going to do, Jay, ultimately is the man them will sit down and hide behind them big songs, they're going to feel threatened. Because now a little young youth was coming in the industry that's 21 years old, can't chill a man with other arsenal of dubs. Nobody then, wants that to happen. But then stick up in them. It's been said, right? It's been said yes. in front of social media that maybe... The fact that the entity of Irish and Chin then, that you're not letting in the newer sounds and newer selectors to 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 into the arena, them say it's like it's like it's like a closed gate. It's a great conversation to have, right? And listen, anything that goes wrong, I have to be blamed for it because I'm at the forefront of the culture. I right. get it, I understand it, but again. Another slogan that I use, make it make sense. Make it make sense, right? I've spent over, I don't know, 150,000 US, possibly maybe more, right? Creating the Rumble series, taking it from country to country, looking for new sound systems. Is that not me letting in new sound systems, right? Out of the whole entire Rumble series, I probably worked with maybe 100 sound systems. Out of the 100 sounds that I worked with, I probably found maybe three of them that show potential to move on to another platform. That's where the conversation should be. You, you understand what I'm saying? So when, it, when it's going wrong, blame Chin. When it's going right, take the credit and don't give the credit to Chin. I have, I have made the effort for the last maybe five years or so to really try to find new talent to introduce them to the sound class culture, right? Um, I've actually staged some of the rumbles where these competitors are competing to go to the, to, to the Grammys, to the world-class Grammys, right? Now, you would think that if you're representing, say I come to the UK and I'm keeping a UK rumble, right? And your favorite song from your neck of the woods, whatever part of the UK you live, is has been selected as a contender to compete for the national championship because that's what it is, you know. The, the, right. the Rumbles are national championships and World Clash is the international championship. So if your sound system in your area, your community, is selected to go to the national championships to become the national champion and then represent the country 
in the international championships, you would think that these sound systems would be able to bring two, three hundred people to cheer for them, right? Because they're going to the national championships. 